The Smith-Lever Act, legislation passed by the U.S. Congress in 1914, established the Cooperative Extension Service. It's an educational partnership between the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the nation's land-grant universities. Cooperative Extension extends the resources of land-grant institutions out to all citizens of the states in which they are located. Cooperative Extension delivers information and expertise from the a and campus in Greensboro and the North Carolina State campus in Raleigh to all citizens of North Carolina through a network of agents, paraprofessionals, and support staff stationed at 101 county cooperative extension centers. But it wasn't always this way. Cooperative extension is actually a movement that began decades before the Smith-Lever Act. The movement to extend the benefits of land-grant expertise in the most useful arenas, agriculture and family and consumer sciences, that culminated in Smith-Lever got rolling in the middle of the 19th century. Senator Justin Morrow and other visionaries established legislative funding for a new approach to higher education. The new approach added agriculture and needful sciences to what had been a preoccupied focus on classical studies. Smith-Lever then organized, funded, and extended that movement so that the knowledge and expertise at land grants could be available to all citizens, not just college students. Smith-Lever provided funding to land-grant universities to disseminate their expertise in agricultural sciences and home economics to benefit rural families and rural economic development. The extension movement caught fire in the United States in the middle of the first decade of the 20th century. In 1906, Tuskegee University's president, Booker T. Washington, presented USDA a formal request to make one of his prized pupils the country's first African-American extension agent. USDA named Thomas Monroe Campbell the country's first African-American extension agent. His official title was Farm Demonstration Agent for the Alabama County where Tuskegee is located. His job also included responsibility for Tuskegee's movable school of agriculture, known as the Jessup Agricultural Wagon. The horse-drawn wagon was equipped with plows, planters, and other farm equipment for demonstrations. By 1914, Campbell had assisted 11 southern states in appointing African-American farm agents and home demonstration agents. The guidance he was providing African-American farmers was a welcome contribution for a nation on the brink of entering a world war that would remove much of the manpower from agriculture. By the end of World War I, Campbell's success was rewarded with a promotion to top administrator for the Lower South. Those regions by then had 459 agricultural extension agents at work. In 1913 and a year before Smith-Lever, North Carolina had five African-American agricultural extension agents. The first African-American agricultural demonstration agent in North Carolina was Neil Alexander Bailey, an a and graduate. He helped farmers in Guilford, Randolph, and Rockingham counties hike their corn yields to 38 bushels per acre. This was more than double the county average. 1914 also marked the first year of the first African-American 4-H club in the state. Interest grew so rapidly that by 1915, there were enough 4-H clubs in North Carolina to justify a statewide coordinator. That coordinator, John D. Ray, was stationed at a and Before 4-H and other extension youth development programs, there were corn clubs for boys and tomato clubs for girls. The forerunner of 4-H conferences was called the Short Course. In 1926, the first statewide short course was held on the a and campus. By 1936, African-American membership in 4-H reached 10,000 in North Carolina, and a loan fund was established for them to borrow money to attend college. In 1929, an African-American extension agent from eastern North Carolina, John W. Mitchell, was promoted to district agent and given an office on a and campus in Greensboro. In 1940, Mitchell became the first African-American to supervise the state's African-American agricultural agents. By 1943, Mitchell's abilities had caught the eye of the USDA administrators in Washington. 
and he was offered a job in the nation's capital with the Federal Extension Office. He was succeeded in North Carolina by R.E. Jones as state supervisor of black farm agents. R.E. Jones' 22-year career with Cooperative Extension was a series of landmark achievements. Under Jones's leadership, in 1945, North Carolina became the nation's first state extension system to employ an African-American as a full-time extension specialist. The specialist area of responsibility was dairy production. That's because dairy herds contributed to family health, as well as farm income. In 1953, another African-American agent achieved recognition when the grand prize ham at a ham and egg show in Johnston County was presented to President Eisenhower. The African-American extension agent who had helped develop these ham and egg show competitions was nicknamed Ham Johnson in recognition of his national fame. By 1952, North Carolina ranked first in the nation among all the states in the number of African Americans on its extension staffs. Passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 launched a merger of North Carolina's Agricultural Extension Program at A&T, the Agricultural Extension Service on the North Carolina State Campus in Raleigh, and the state's 101 county extension centers. R.E. Jones was appointed an assistant director of the state's extension service, but continued to maintain an office on the a and campus in Greensboro. Another landmark occurred in 1972. Congress approved an appropriation of $4 million for extension work and $8 million for research at the 16 historically black land-grant colleges and universities. But for extension at the HBCU land grants, the new funds were still channeled through administration at the larger 1862 land-grant universities in each of these states. Then in 1977, Congress passed legislation that allocated extension funds directly to a and and the other extension program at historically black colleges and universities. Under the leadership of Associate Dean Daniel Godfrey, the Cooperative Extension Program at a and took advantage of self-determination for unprecedented expansion and accomplishments. a and Extension joined forces with the Tennessee Valley Authority to respond to paper mill closings in the North Carolina mountains with a project involving native shrubs that for some laid-off workers became a springboard into the Christmas tree industry. In 1978, a and Extension introduced mobile marketing units with storage and cooling for vegetable marketing to small-scale agriculture in North Carolina. In the late 1970s, a and Extension Program became one of the first 1890 extension programs to hire a forestry specialist to work with small-scale farmers, and a and Extension became one of the first 1890 programs to qualify for Renewable Resources Extension Act funds. The funding was used to establish a small woodlot management program. In 1980, a Extension launched the Land Ownership Information Project in response to the decline in minority-owned farmland in North Carolina. At the time, African Americans were losing their land to legal pitfalls and unfair treatment by lending agencies at a rate two and a half times the rate the white-owned farms were changing hands at foreclosure sales. The Land Ownership Information Act led to the Land Loss Prevention Project, which in turn played a major role in the landmark Pigford versus Glickman case, which resulted in compensation to many black farmers who had been victims of discriminatory lending practices. The Tobacco Transition Payment Program of 2004 that became known as the Tobacco Buyout eliminated price supports and quotas paid to farmers. Smaller farms were in line to be hardest hit by the loss of $7 million in federal subsidies and economists were predicting that many would fold without alternative crops for income to replace tobacco. e and Extension rose to the challenge with an outreach to farms on alternative crops and livestock, including pasture-raised poultry, hogs, goats, mushrooms, and cut flower production. Many of those programs are still supporting small-scale agriculture in North Carolina. The Smith-Lever Act created extension to the practical knowledge of agriculture, home economics, and rural energy, from the universities to the people. While times and technologies have changed, 
Cooperative Extension at A&T still exists to supply the latest research-based information so it can be applied to issues that matter most to the people of North Carolina. Throughout the history of Cooperative Extension at A&T, leadership came from noteworthy individuals who would go on to influential roles at state and national levels. At the state of North Carolina's official celebration of the Smith Lever Act in May of 2014, 11 Legends of Extension were recognized for leadership in establishing the state's extension legacy as a national model, and five of the 11 distinguished themselves at ENT. Dazelle Foster Lowe and William C. Cooper joined Dr. Daniel Godfrey, R.E. Jones, and John Mitchell as inaugural Legends of Extension. Dazelle Foster Lowe began her extension career in 1919 in the branch that was then known as the Home Demonstration, rose to statewide coordinator by 1925 and continued on as a top-level extension administrator until 1955. Cooper began as a County 4-H agent went on to lead state 4-H programs for African-American youth and was instrumental in establishing the first 4-H camp for African-Americans. We have a vision firmly in place for the next 100 years of cooperative extension based on the North Carolina a and campus in Greensboro and extended out to the citizens of North Carolina through 101 county extension centers. Our local food and health initiative means that we will make the university farm into a hub of local production resources, a new pavilion, a local foods processing center, student-run farm, and a creamery for producing artisanal cheeses and yogurt will strengthen areas where a and extension has traditionally excelled at the same time that the new facilities and programs will give us a focal point for where we want to go. At the 2014 edition of one of the highlights of Cooperative Extension's annual celebration of small-scale agriculture, the Small Farmers Appreciation Luncheon, a new North Carolina a and Small Farm Collaborative, was announced. Cooperative Extension will be the linchpin for additional staff and programs to provide farm marketing and business management education and innovative food production programs. The a and Cooperative Extension Program is already several strides into the next 100 years. The second century of progress begins with urban and local food production systems rooted in our legacy of alternative crops, poultry and livestock, and continued support for small farms. At the same time, our family, consumer sciences, and youth development extension work allows communities and families with limited financial resources to keep pace with the American dream. We invite all our new friends and traditional stakeholders to join us and to build with us in this exciting venture.